My name is Lydia and you're watching Open Studio right here on Cape Town TV. So today with me and in the studio I have a guest who is going to be telling us about the youth cafe that is um, has been launched um, in Union Dale that is uh, designed as a tool to empower the youth. Is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> so I would like first to introduce yourself before we get um, to any um, further details. Well, my name's Kayla. I'm the Minister of Social Development spokesperson. Okay. So I assist him in all of his media and PR related crews. All right. Um, before I get into um, why the cafe was designed or um, for what purpose, I'd like to, for the viewer out there, what is the Youth Cafe? What is this that we are talking about? So a Youth Cafe is an innovative safe space designed for young people. It targets young people who are not in education, who are not in employment, and who are not in training. But it's also open to young people who um, come from the surrounding community. They tend to be located within disadvantaged backgrounds. They can be found in rural as well as urban environments. What they tend to include is workshops on personal development as well as skills training. They include high-speed internet with computers, library areas, quiet areas for reading, as well as um, every youth cafe is marked by its innovative little barista or innovative okay. little um, <coughs> coffee shops where the young people can actually just unwind a little bit in between their studying. So it's really a wholesome environment for young people to develop themselves and really have the, most gre the greatest opportunity mm -hmm. to take advantage of employment opportunities around them. All right, so how did the, c the idea come about? So the idea is informed by our provincial strategic goal number two. The provincial strategic goal number two is about creating educational opportunities and um, opportunities for better outcomes in terms of their personal development. Now, the way that this has been, or the way that this will be facilitated going forward, is that the Western Cape government has allocated 15 million rand in the next medium term expenditure framework in order to boost the amount of opportunities for young people. So there are a number of other initiatives that fall under PSG2. These are included, uh, included in these are the Cape Youth at Work program, the Mass Opportunity and Development Centres or MOD Centres, um, as well as our youth cafes. Right. So as this was um, being discussed or um, like behind the scenes and stuff, um, what has been like probably the challenges um, in starting this or? There are a lot of challenges when it comes to starting a youth cafe. So firstly, the challenge is um, where is the safe space going to be that the young people from this community will go mm. to? Is it accessible to them on their way home from school? Um, will they actually use it? Will they know where it is or what it is? Um, and ultimately, where is it going to be? Right. So really getting community buy-in is the most important thing because it relies on volunteers, it, it relies on the young people to attend, and it also relies on the employees showing up to deliver their best to these young people and motivate them on a day-to-day -day basis. Great. I hear you actually like naming all these things, um, what it entails, and um, the challenges and all those things, but do you know what it actually took for it to, um, to have even launched just one youth cafe? Mm -hmm. I mean, because I believe that um, there are many, not only in um, Un Uniondale. So do you know like the behind the scenes kind of work that actually took to even build just this one? It requires a lot of buy-in from our municipalities, from the private sector and from our government itself. So ordinarily when we go about identifying a new youth cafe, we'll begin by identifying a community that has greatest needs. So does it have yeah. a large youth population um, and will they make use of this opportunity? Are there other opportunities like it that might make this, um, this resource invaluable? 
So once we identify the community, we then move to approach the stakeholders. So for example, with Uniondale, the stakeholders were the Garden Route District Municipality okay. and the George Local Municipality. We then also approach the Department of Economic Opportunities. They have a program called DDAT, which is centered around um, youth employment. They were able to bring along IBM and Google into this operation. Oh. And as a result of these stakeholders and this partnership, we were able to create this. A lot of community um, activists came on board to help with painting and with, with practical um, with practically establishing yeah. the building. Mm. Speak, we, now we are talking about uh, the youth cafe in Unidale, right? Unidale, is it? Unidale. So um, were you present at the, at the launch? What like took place at the launch and what activities um, were probably done or um, were or the programs that that you offer or things like those like what exactly um, took place at the launch so on the day um, the launch included a speech by uh, mayor nike uh, there was a speech by a couple of community activists and young leaders within the area there was some traditional dancing which was absolutely lovely to see there was also a speech by Minister Fritz where he really commended um, all the activists who took place yeah. um, and who took part in this. Mm -hmm. After the launch, um, we were all shown, uh, we including the community activists, including the civil servants, were shown around uh, the actual facility itself. The facility itself is beautiful, so it's very colorful to attract young people. It has its high-speed internet, it has its computers. Um, there's a little space as well for young people to eat and drink. Okay. Um, so it's really a lovely little spot. Yeah. Earlier, I think you did mention uh, the social development. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is the role? of uh, the um, social development in this youth cafe? So uh, youth cafes are actually the brainchild of Minister Albert Fritz, who is the um, provincial minister for social development. The first youth cafe was established five years ago in Mitchell's Plain. It falls under um, PSG2 and the partnering um, departments for PSG2 okay. are social development, community development and education. But the Minister of Social Development has really been the pioneering force behind youth cafes. Yeah. And what exactly do you do when it comes to um, this initiative? Do I call it initiative? <laughs> or do I call it project? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What, it, what is your role? Um, in, My role in is to things? make you find out about it, to make the media aware of it, to make the young people aware of it, to really get um, an awareness out of what this is and how it can benefit young people. Right. So I think we should take a quick break and uh, we'll be back um, speaking to Kate, speaking to Kate more about um, the Youth Cafe and what it is about and um, all the programs that, are, that they offer and how you can actually um, get it and how you can actually be part of it. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back. I am still with Kayla and we're still talking about um, the youth um, cafe that has been launched in Union Dale. So, um, Kayla, this, um, t can you please tell us about the collaboration between the governmental bodies and this initiative and this youth cafe? Absolutely. And what is the role and everything just behind it? Okay. Um, so, our municipalities are actually the key stakeholders when okay. it comes to establishing a youth cafe. The municipalities are so important when it comes to actually identifying a venue that um, will accommodate all of the young people, that is zoned appropriately, um, just so that we follow all the legal processes okay. and tick all the right boxes. So once we have them on board, we also approached um, the Department of uh, economic opportunities and development. So they were a key stakeholder in this because they are really, really empowered and motivated under Minister Beverly Schaefer to create more job opportunities for young people. Mm. In fact, just the day before, she was speaking about how she wants to create 50,000 um, opportunities in terms of work for young people a year. Um, this is something that Minister has gone on to Twitter and really um, pushed himself. He believes that this is a fantastic yeah. initiative that we need to be driving to overcome unemployment. Uh, in terms of other governmental bodies, 
Um, I think the focus is not so much in terms of what government does, but in terms of what um, key stakeholders within the community are doing. So one thing that this department is constantly trying to drive is a whole of society approach. Government can't provide all of the services that we need in yeah. a developing country such as our own. We are very resource strapped as it is. So what that means is that if you have the time and the energy, um, if you have any resources to spare, that as a community activist, you need to raise your hand and say, listen, I can help if only if it means like, okay, I'm going to donate 10 Rand um, to this specific initiative within my community, mm. or maybe I can um, volunteer two hours um, to help train young people on ICT skills. Yeah. So it really does take everyone interacting together to create a, a more wholesome society that uplifts young people. Mm. So are the governmental bodies um, sort of sponsors or sort of like mm. donors? They, in some sense, in some sense, yes, in some sense, no. So the budget for the youth cafes comes from the Department of Social Development. Okay. Now, our partners in ICT development, so Google and IBM, they've been identified through the Department of Economic Opportunities and through their sub-program DDAT. They are an incredible department when it comes to um, uplifting small businesses, medium businesses, and creating that um, public-private partnership that we hear of so often, but that okay. really actually is the key to creating job opportunities within our society. Oh, right. um, please tell us about the programs that um, the Youth Cafe offers. So each youth cafe is different. Each okay. youth cafe has different specializations, and that's that's dependent on the need within the community. So. With Uniondale, there was an identified need to upskill young people in terms of their ICT or in terms of their computer literacy, which is why IBM and Google were brought in. Mm. Um, there have been other youth cafes, such as that in Filiersdorp, which have focused more on sports upliftment. Um, so young people have received training, for example, in how to become um, coaches or how to referee or that sort of thing. It completely, the skills and the development is completely dependent on the need. Okay. So you, 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 you looked around and you saw that there was a need for um, computer literacy and stuff. Is that the only um, program that you're offering? No. And so why, sorry, and why is it that you're offering that, um, these kind of, uh, that, that program and what exactly does it entail? Okay. So each ca youth cafe is different. As you said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it depends on the partners who come, in, who come on board as mm. well. So, for example, we have one youth cafe in Freigrond. It's called Sozo. Um, it has a lot of partners within it, but its key partner or its key implementer has ensured that they have a hairdresser or a hairdressing school. Oh, okay. They have hydroponics. Um, they have ICT, graphic design. So, as I mentioned before, it takes a whole of society approach. So, if there are more people within that community, who say, okay, I know a bit about agriculture, maybe I can come in here and teach these kids about this. Mm. Or if there's a private company or another department who comes on board, that would be fantastic. And we call on any person, any um, private company to really raise their hand and volunteer. Yeah. So all the programs that is offered in it um, at Unidale, mm -hmm. Uniondale, um, are not the same as offered in other youth cafes? No, it's not. Really? Why is that? It just depends on who the partners are. <laughs> <laughs> on the partners. Yeah. So um, the Youth Cafe has actually reached a milestone, I would say. Not really a milestone um, as per se, but um, it's been around for five years. Indeed. Please tell us about the journey um, having to have this one cafe. And why is it that the minister, I'd say, mm -hmm. thought of opening a second one and a third one and a fourth one? And now, you know. Okay. Um, so it began about five years ago, as you said, yeah. in Mitchell's Plain, um, which is ministers, where Minister's heart and soul is. Mm. Um, as a result of that, well, prior to that, he's always had a great passion for youth, for upskilling them, for providing them with development. One thing that really breaks his heart is to see young people who are capable um, have their lives taken away by gangsterism, by substance abuse, um, who rather than finding employment opportunities, um, resort to like early age pregnancy. Yeah. So he really wants to be able to upscale them and give them the most. Um, this is why he's pioneered these initiatives in rural as well as in metropolitan areas. Uh, so as you said, we have 11 youth cafes at the moment. Okay. Um, he's planning to launch another three. 
So these three are going to be in Metro North, Metro East and Overberg or the Cape Winelands area. Mm. We've received a budget of 1.8 million Rand for the mm. next year to facilitate the expansion of our youth cafes. Mm. And the youth cafes actually boast about 10,000. Um, Mm -hmm. visitors. Per, is it per day or is it per month? Per month. And how is this happening? <laughs> um, so we get a lot of foot traction, um, there's a lot of word of mouth. One young person will come in, they'll hear about it, they'll see the good act aspects of it and then maybe on their way walking home, they'll be walking home with a couple of friends, they'll be mm. like, hey why don't you come along with me, come see this. And yeah. what's really fantastic about that as well is, especially in um, disadvantaged backgrounds, is it gives children an absolute alternative to being on the streets, being exposed to unhealthy influences. It gives them a safe space to actually do their homework mm. and um, to talk to people who are like-minded and who want to excel in their in their workspace, in their right. life. Mm. And you did speak about um, the minister. Okay. Um, I have to take a break right now, but um, we'll be back and talking about um, the progress in actually opening the other youth cafe. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back, I'm still with Kayla and we're still talking about the Youth Cafe in Union Dale, um, the launching of the Youth Cafe in Union Dale, which was launched in the, on the 13th of March, right? Correct. So, um, can you please tell us about the, since now the Minister is, is thinking of actually opening um, more Youth Cafes and um, three more between this year and next year. And the plans, tell us about the plans behind them and because it's getting more exciting now that um, there are more youth cafes that are going to be launched. So please tell us about the excitement behind it and the planning and the progress and the process into um, opening these new ones coming coming new ones. Okay, <laughs> so before we get started on building our youth, okay. new youth cafes, identifying our partners, identifying the location, we need to obviously ensure that there's budget for it. Okay. So at the moment we're busy going into our budget vote, which will be on the 27th of March. You can watch it on YouTube okay. or you could visit in person. <laughs> um, once we've tabled that budget, then we'll receive our allocation um, for the next coming financial year mm. and we'll be able to develop our next three. Okay. One thing I'd like to say about the upcoming budget is that it's made a very generous donation of 4.8 million, 4 million rand and that will go towards the Cape Youth at Work program. The Cape Youth at Work program, like the Youth Cafe, also falls under our provincial strategic plan number two, which is aimed at youth development. Now what I think is so special about this program is that it provided in the last financial year, or the financial year that we're ending now, uh, it provided uh, over a hundred youths from Mitchell's Plain and surrounding communities with a volunteering um, opportunity. Now as a result of that, some of them have gone on to higher education, some of them will continue on the program, um, or some have even identified their own employment opportunities which they've moved on to. Prior to this program, they didn't have those opportunities, okay, so yeah. it's been a really fantastic opportunity. Mm. Um, in the next year, we'll continue to take on our, our interns. We've already identified the interns for the next year. Amongst those interns that we've identified are 10 young people from the Cape Town Society for the Blind. So 10 partially um, sighted and blind people will also get the opportunity oh, to become wow. interns and to develop their own mm. um, skill set so that they can work in the world of okay. work and they're not abandoned. Right. Um, we've also identified several people from rural communities who will work within their local offices and associated youth um, programs. Mm. Something caught my ears as you were speaking. Um, so these programs, actually, you, the candidates or like the participants or like the youth who are um, enrolling in these kind of progra programs, they actually get um, job opportunities. Yes. So it's almost like an institution. I, mm -hmm. I, I think you did mention that it is for um, for people or the youth that has not had any educational background and all those things. Now I think that could be challenging for someone mm -hmm. who doesn't have any. Is, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, it could be um, challenging for someone who doesn't have any educational background and coming to enroll on these kind of programs and um, for 14 to 25. Um, it's typically about 16 to 25. 16 to 25. Mm. So imagine I'm 18 years old and I come mm. to enroll you know, on this program and I don't have any um, educational background whatsoever. Um, I'm, I'm literally, not dumb, but I'm literally, I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. So 
how challenging is that to actually enroll people who haven't got no educational background? Well, I think the youth have an amazing capacity to learn, to adapt, and if they're hungry enough, they will develop the skills that they have. I mean, we've had an incredibly low dropout rate, maybe one or two young people who felt that they couldn't do the course. Okay. And it's not due to um, what they have to do on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's often due to um, their environmental background, that they feel they aren't able to cope. And where that does happen, we are able to provide social services or psychosocial services to support them in whatever needs that they have. Um, the other thing I'd like to note is that uh, a lot of we've had a lot of partnering orga organizations who take on these young people into um, actual, should I say, employment opportunities that aren't with government. As a result of this, um, they really are being empowered. It's not just um, a lip service stipend, like, here you go, here's okay. a bit of money every month, yeah. um, you have a job now. Mm. We really are doing our best to empower them. And they're placed within our local offices or within our youth cafes. Some of them might have a skill or an aptitude for children, for example, and then they'll be placed there. So we take it on a case-by-case -case basis. What do you do? What are you good at? What do you want to do? Oh. Um, it's not just that they're all thrown into... Uh, one big basket. Right. Yeah. But then like um, for someone who actually went to school and for someone who, who is enrolling in these um, mm -hmm. programs, now what is the chance that they will actually get a job? Mm. Well, this is the first year of our implementation. Okay. Um, so it is still in our pilot phase. But we've ran a similar process before. Um, it's called Yebo. It's partnered with, um, so it's a partnership between the Department of Social Development and the Department of Cultural Affairs and Sports. So what they did was they had a volunteership for about 100 kids in 2016. And of those 100 kids, 61% of them are now either in higher um, education or are in full-time employment. So it does provide them with an opportunity to upskill themselves and to have a genuine working opportunity in life. And how long does it take? Uh, so the program that we ran before was only for four months. We had a budget for four months. But as a result of the budget that we're getting now, we'll, have this, we'll get the opportunity to run this program for one year. Right. Let's get back to the base. So the youth de development um, um, strategy strategy, how did it assist in um, these cafes? How does it assist in these cafes or how did it assist in these cafes? So what it does is it creates a collaboration between the necessary departments. They'll be able to sit down the department officials and say, okay, so I can offer this in terms of a youth cafe. I can offer this, I can offer this, I can offer this. And everyone sits down at the table um, and it really creates a, a good spot for everyone to workshop together within government and not to work in silos because too often um, you'll find one government, one government department running this initiative for youth and that department running this initiative and they're not speaking to each other. Um, you can have several of the same sort of initiative within the same constituency and it's you know, it's not really helping anyone. So right. really having these provincial strategic goals helps to ensure that government is working together um, and it's really addressing the needs within the society or the community. Mm. Did you have like any challenges at actually getting people to work in it or like to put in work or um, just to work together, like having the youth development um, services or strategi um, strategies or, you know, like just people who, donors and, mm -hmm. um, Sponsors, did you have any challenges in actually getting everybody in board, on, on board? I think that the challenge is always, when is the date? When are okay. we going to launch this? When is it going to be convenient for uh, everyone? Yeah. But we have strong leadership within the Department of Social Development, so we did manage to get it launched on time. Right. So for anyone who are actually like thinking, um, I actually want, like watching, and like, I actually want that, you know, and um, I don't have any of these or oh, don't have any educational background or anything like that yeah. and um, I'd actually want to enroll in a program like that because it sounds like it's it's a very good initiative like I'm like looking I was like looking at it like reading about it and I'm like wow who could have thought opening a cafe and um, offering this and offering that while offering um, programs where they can uplift you and where they can actually get you a job you know and all those things like for someone who actually wants to um, get um, 
get into these programs? How can they find you? So you can search us on the Western Cape Government website. Uh, there will be a little tab there saying Youth Cafes or Youth. Mm -hmm. Once you click on there, there'll be a little interactive map showing you where all of our youth cafes are within the province. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, if you know of the Youth Cafe, you can just Google it and then all the contact details will come up there. Or you can just contact us on the okay. government website. My details are there. <laughs> right. Thank you oh. so much, Kayla. Thank you so much to our viewers for watching, but unfortunately, unfortunately, that is it that we have for today. My name is Lydia, this is Open Studio. Until next time, bye-bye.